Uh, welcome to today's session. This is titled Build Your OCO Regents OER Grant Proposal. My name is Dr. Amanda Kazee from the University of Central Oklahoma, and I will be today's moderator. So did you know the Oklahoma State Regents for Higher Education is offering easy to apply for faculty grants for the adoption and use of OER? Today's session, you'll hear about how OSU faculty have earned grants for work they were already doing or work they were able to easily incorporate into their semester plans. Today's presenters are Kathy S. Miller, the coordinator for Open OK State and OER librarian at Oklahoma State University, and Christina Calhoun, the instructional design and online learning librarian for Oklahoma State University Libraries. Welcome again to this session, and I'm gonna turn it over to our speakers for today. If you have any questions or things that come up that you would like the speakers to respond to, please just type them into the chat window, and I will make sure to get those passed along to our speakers. Kathy? All right, well, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm Kathy S. Miller, E-S-S-M-I-L-L-E-R, it's not my middle initial, but we're glad to have all of you with us. And uh, our goal today is kind of to give a quick overview of how we at OSU are understanding uh, the grants and the application process, uh, but even more than that, to give us all a chance to kind of come together, uh, identify hiccups you've experienced in the process or questions you may have, uh, or uh, if you're faculty, uh, how you might be able to think of and consider applying for these grants. Um, sorry, I don't have my notifications off. Uh, so if you do have questions, please drop them in the chat as we go. Uh, and because we really only have like five minutes of official talking because I was hoping we would just really have a chance to problem solve uh, together and celebrate this great opportunity we have. So, uh, and I'll invite Brad or Tracy to correct uh, anything that I represent incorrectly. Well. Anybody actually can jump in and, and correct me, but uh, my understanding is that the regents have set aside legislature. I don't know where the genesis of the money is, well, us and our taxes, but uh, a, a, a meaningful amount of money to support um, the adoption, modification, uh, and creation of open educational resources here in the state of Oklahoma, specifically in this instance for higher education. Uh, and I think. Um, concurrent enrollment classes. And I get concurrent and dual. I know those mean something different. So if what we actually have is the other one, um, forgive me. So um, they have to be, the current pot of money uh, needs to be ex expended by the end of the fiscal year, which is uh, the end of June of this year, 2023. Uh, it's looking like there will be another round of grant funding available in the next fiscal year, beginning July 21st. Uh, and I encourage you, I have not defined OER, but we'll do it here in a second. We're staying right now with the money and what it means to need to unload it during the fiscal year. So once uh, OCO, uh, Brad, has access to those funds, we have we have to spend them within the fiscal year. Uh, we'll take a minute and acknowledge that that is not how higher education works. It's not how curriculum design works. It's not how any of this works, but it is how spending gobs of money works. So we will adapt our processes to match uh, what needs to happen to get the money. Uh, so I, I used to be a K-12 arts educator. So I guess that informs a lot of my willingness to uh, massage my practice to meet whatever needs to be done to get money. Um, so anyway, any questions about that, the availability of the funds and the timeline in which they need to be used? Okay, and I probably won't count to 10 because I know I'm speaking to a room full of educators and spent. Thank you, Scarlett. Uh, so in the chat, we have spent or encumbered. And I think they're, they're already, they have to be spent, gone. Uh, Brad, do you want to take a second and clarify that? Happily, thank you. So the last day that we will actually take applications for these grant opportunities is May 15th. So a faculty member that is teaching a spring course with OER or teaching a summer course with OER, May 15th is really the last day that we can accept one of these applications because there's about a three week delay of us from the time that we get the verification I need to be able to pay someone to getting those funds out from our agency to your institution and then your institution going to the faculty member. So yeah, May 15th, you know, 25 days, somewhere in there. 
yeah, we're coming down to it, but there's still plenty of opportunity. And Kathy's going to tell you, it's just so easy uh, what they have to do to be able to take advantage of it. Exactly. And if you, if you're hearing that May 15th and you're panicking, and then if we, as we go through how we've marketed it here at OSU, uh, you still feel like it's overwhelming at this point, keep in mind, uh, they'll re-up in July. So if thinking for right now is too much, Tell yourself you're thinking for July or next year. So uh, they're intended to um, support courses using open educational resources rather than requiring students to purchase commercial textbooks. Now here at uh, Open OK State at Oklahoma State University, we are able to mark courses that aren't using commercial textbooks. And we do include uh, courses using library materials in that course marking. This grant does not cover does not apply to those courses. Courses which qualify for this grant are courses which are using OER. Um, any questions about that? I saw something in the chat. A Barnes and Noble OER that lower covers about 75. A grant will assist you once you get the other 25% of that commercial cost covered. Um, but Alan, if you'll if you'll drop in the chat where you're from, we'll connect you with someone that that can kind of help you find your way to that. Uh, so I'll jump real quickly to how we're marketing it here at um, OSU. And Christina uh, is gonna drop in the chat a couple of different resources that we've shared with our faculty. Um, and I also did kind of an abbreviated version of the video that we've shared as the showcase video for this session. Um, but basically we are reaching out to faculty who are currently this spring teaching a course or will in, the beginning of the summer teaching a course that does not require purchase of commercial materials. Uh, and so really I'm re reaching out to the people that I already know are doing it. Um, it's not necessarily enough time to make the jump right now from a commercial textbook to an OER, right? That's a lot to put on faculty, but you can definitely be looking towards next year and doing that. If you've already contacted your uh, bookstore to say you're requiring a textbook for fall, give them a quick email and say, I changed my mind. And, and, and require that. Um, so we're, we're reaching out to faculty that we know have adopted OER and saying, hey, here's a chance to get uh, $500 for having adopted it. Uh, if you're willing to share out your lesson plans or assignments or quizzes that you have created that go along with it, uh, you can get another um, $500. Let me drop the, the link. Let's see, the flyer was linked to the session, but here I'll go ahead and drop the PDF in the chat again in case you wanna scroll through uh, in case I'm not answering questions exactly the way you need them. Um, licensed CC by four, yeah, so that, um, oh, all our video stuff is what's licensed, yeah. So you're welcome to reuse that. Point back to Christina Calhoun uh, as the brilliant creator of that stuff. Uh, so that's who we've really reached out to. People we know are already using materials they've created themselves, uh, people that are already using OER and inviting them to share their syllabi and their assignments. So places in which we recognize existing practices align with the intent of this grant. Uh, we, we're kind of a step ahead of that here at OSU because of the course marking. Uh, I have a list of people that I know uh, are, are using it. So, but if your institution, if you've not heard about OER or not heard about these grants, shoot me an email and I'll, I'll look at our list. Of, we've got an OER state subgroup and I'll look at our list and see who comes to that that's a representative of your institution and see if we can connect you uh, and get it rolling. Um, questions so far about what might or might not qualify as far as our conversation today. Okay, so uh, since there weren't questions, I'll go ahead and provide some clarification. Uh, one of my faculty members is using a library ebook, a, a book that we have full access to, that the students can access, uh, and they emailed to say, will this qualify for the grant? It will not, uh, because it does use a paywall resource. Uh, the intent is to create and share out resources that can be accessed by anyone, regardless of whether or not they have an institutional affiliation. Uh, I have another brilliant faculty member who designs in amazing courses using OER, uh, but she is not yet ready to share out her syllabus openly. She wants to maintain uh, full copyright over her, her class design. And so that does not qualify for this. There are other opportunities to support uh, that great work, but this particular grant uh, is only for resources that can be shared out and accessed by 
uh, my grandma, if she wants to, who does not work with an institution. Okay, well, also, I don't have one alive. So that is a complicated example. But um, so the way we are working through the process here at Oklahoma State, I'm emailing the folks, letting them know that there's this opportunity out here saying, hey, if you're doing it right now or you're going to start the summer with it, give me a holler. And then the next step is to, and if you've got that PDF, if you want to click into it, um, I'll maybe share my screen in a clumsy way. Um, the next step we talked through with them uh, is to submit the proposal interest form. Now I'm going to go and click into this. Didn't test it, so I don't know what's going to happen. We'll see. Okay, so this gets us to the proposal interest form. So if you are one of the advocates at your campus, um, I'll tell you a little bit of what I do as a librarian here. I'll email, for instance, Dr. Burkett, whom I know is using an open educational resource. And I've emailed her and I've said, this is a proposal interest form. These are my recommended answers, which is a lot of work on my end, right? But it simplifies it on their end. And I, I'll say, I think these would be your answers. Are you interested? Uh, and she says, yes, no. Uh, and then they can click into the link and answer the questions. Um, and then at the bottom, there's the opportunity to share your schedule. And the next step then uh, is meeting with uh, usually Tracy. And they get a chance to meet with Tracy Romano. And uh, it's a quick meeting. She's uh, succinct. And they get to talk about their project. Now, we've I've had some faculty show up with a, a brilliant slide presentation and timeline. It does not need to be that robust. This is an NSF. Um, this is this is OCO. And so this is important work. But the state trusts your credibility. You don't we you don't have to prove your scholarship. You don't need to indicate a gap in the field. Uh, just let us let them know what you're doing. So not I don't mean a low bar. What we have is like a high level of trust in our faculty uh, that doesn't re require you to come in with uh, your fancy PowerPoint deck. Although if you have one and you want to share it, that's great. But don't don't feel obligated. You're just going to go. And for instance, if I'm talking about the our digital literacy, our critical digital digital literacy course, uh, I would come in and I would say, hey, yeah, we we found a couple different OER and we've matched them together. And we're not requiring students to purchase textbooks. I'm willing to share my syllabus. We've got some good assignments designed along with it. And Tracy will go, that sounds wonderful. And then walk them through the MOU. Uh, and then everybody goes, wow, that was easy. And you log off in 15 minutes. And then the next step is that Tracy sends a copy of the MOU. Um, and the MOU has been through attorneys and it has some wherefores and thereases. Uh, but basically the intent of the MOU is to ensure that both parties understand the timeline, uh, that you have a chance to kind of look at what the deliverables are. And for this grant, the deliverables, the fine, like the final report uh, is due, I think in September, but to get your money, which of course you want to do, you need to send in your syllabus or other proof that you haven't required purchase of a commercial textbook. So the getting your money part is a really easy lift. Um, yeah. Uh, at the end, the final report you'll give is actually something that good educators are thinking through anyway. How, what did the students think of this? What did I think of it? Uh, would I do this again? Uh, what kind of numbers, you know, what kind of impact did this have? Uh, and getting a chance to share your insight that you already reflect on and develop uh, with the regions at the end of the course so that then Brad has those things to take to the people with the pockets and say, look, look, what a big deal it is. This is really making a difference. Uh, so, but you, you'll meet with Tracy for 15 minutes or less. Tell her how great your idea is. You'll get the MOU that you've already seen. And it sounds fancy and complicated, but it really is to protect your intellectual property. Um, so when you read through it and you hear about the licensing, uh, one of the reasons it has gone through attorneys and things is to say, and ensure that faculty sharing this work out retain their ownership over the resources. So uh, at OSU for faculty, anything they create remains their own intellectual property. They own it. Uh, the intellectual property policy varies sometimes from institution to institution. When you sign this MOU, you're retaining intellectual property you're retaining ownership of your intellectual property. So that's why it has so many words. It's it's in the faculty's best interest. And so, you know, uh, and I've talked to faculty who are like, well, I'm not gonna, I'd rather not get that money than read the MOU, which you're like, well, congratulations on apparently making God's money. But it's worth it to go through it. And if you have questions about it, Tracy will answer them. Uh, or you can holler at me and, and, and we'll walk you through it. But uh, it's 
it's really not any more complicated than your students probably feel like your syllabus is to read. So uh, you can maybe kind of remind yourself of that as, as you're working through it. So then you sign the MOU, uh, you have your academic officer sign it. And if you don't know who that is, uh, either Brad and Tracy do, or again, you can reach out to me and I'll connect you with whoever your OCO OER person is and see if they can find it. If you're at OSU, it's Chris Francisco. Uh, and then they'll send it back. You send it in to Brad and Tracy. Uh, they send you a nice email that says you've received a grant from the Regents, which is awesome looking. And then they request your syllabus or other proof that you haven't required purchase of a commercial textbook. You send that in and they send you the money. And um, one of the biggest hiccups I've had here is convincing my faculty really just send the syllabus and the deliverables will be later. So, but that's true. And you're doing Brad and Tracy a favor if you'll just get that sucker sent in and let them get this stuff processed because we need that bank account empty by the end of June, right? And then we've got time over the summer to get the report ready and everything. Questions so far? Okay, so kind of trying to cover it from both sides if I were advocating to you as your liaison, but also if you are someone who's sharing information out with uh, your faculty, kind of the approach that we have taken. Um, and uh, as I was saying that, I thought of something that I needed to mention, but I don't remember what it is. So hopefully it becomes a question on somebody's part. Uh, Christina, I'm going to pitch to you here in about 10 seconds to kind of share how you feel like people might be able to use the short video that you created. Okay, so I'm giving you time, time to kind of ponder and think about this. They can be collaborative. Uh, if you're collaborating with people, for instance, if Christine and I are teaching this class together, uh, we each need to submit an MOU, uh, but we'll probably have the same meeting with Tracy. We'll meet together. We'll talk about it together. But uh, for bookkeeping and stuff, we each send an MOU. The way the getting the money part is looking here at OSU uh, is still feels different every time. And I'm sure it's not. But we get an email from the regents saying something about warrants and vouchers. And then we send that to our accounting person who we put on the MOU, so that's great. And our accounting person reaches out to university accounting and pulls the money from the regents out and then disperses it to our individuals. The regents can't pay people, the regents can only pay university accounting. And so that's where that's where that goes in. And that's we're tr we're still trying to smooth that out here at OSU. Uh, and but I'm no I'm not sure that we'll need to have as familiar an understanding of that pipeline uh, next year. But that is one of the hitches in the giddy up. So you tell your people if you're an advocate, why if there's an email that has a word warrant, do something with it. This isn't automatic. There is another step. And if you're a faculty member, some you're going to get an email that has a word warrant in it. There is another step to get the money. It doesn't happen automatically. Okay, Christina, what would you like to share about how uh, about the video creation and advocacy? Sure. Um, the video that I shared earlier, um, there was a YouTube link, and I wrote on there specifically OK State branded video because there is one that I've also created that is unbranded. Um, I think it still has Kathy's contact information in there. So if you'd like to just clip it, so uh, if you want to just use it as is, you can send a clipped uh, um, section of the video to your faculty to say, here's what you need to do. Um, but we've also I've also created an OSF folder that has all of those assets in it. Um, the um, it's been helpful for us to use that video because it's really short. It's like a minute and something seconds, 20 seconds, if that 10 seconds, I don't remember. Um, and um, we just send it them to, with information about what to do, what to apply, what is the grant involved. Um, so if you'd like to use that with your faculty, um, please feel free. It is licensed CC by 4.0. So you just have to give um, credit. Um, you can look at the terms there. Um, but that OSF folder um, has all of those. Um, and I'll reshare it here in just a second. has all of the assets for the video. It was originally created in Camtasia. Um, so if you have an issue with that, please just feel free to contact me and I'm sure we can figure something out um, to, to get that working for you. But yeah, every every piece of it is in there, all of the images and files and whatnot. Um, Kathy, can you think of anything else that I could add to that? No, I will add that it's brilliant. Her work is so good and concise. I can I can make it all the way through Christina's videos and I, I love that. And I think our goal for the one we sent OK Say it was a minute 11 a minute 15 and she got it down to that and has everything in it you need uh and yeah i love it and so since she shared the assets you can you can put share them out in a different format right like you can create your own flyer 
or, or whatever you want, um, however you like to do it. So um, I'll give a quick definition of OER, although this isn't an OER session. Um, OER, the way we define them uh, or here at, Open, at Oklahoma State University is that they're research, teaching, and learning resources that have been intentionally created and licensed uh, to be uh, used for free by downstream users. Uh, and in most cases, it, they're modifiable for context, uh, localization, what you need for your class, how you teach, how your students learn. Um, we've incorporated a lot of open research practices into some into an IMLS research grant we've done where we've been very transparent with uh, each stage of it and gotten input from the field in a way that you can't necessarily with closed research practices. Um, as far as teaching resources are concerned, uh, Michael Speck mentioned paralegal studies, and that's a dynamic and changing field. And one of the great things about it is that once you've got your own textbook, you make the changes as, as you see them reflected in the field. You're not bound by whether or not uh, a commercial textbook publisher is going to release it again. Uh, you also can provide before day one access to your students. There's no, I can't access the textbook. Well, uh, Okay, you're choosing not to, but you definitely have a link that you can click into for free anytime you feel like it. Uh, and uh, it's also a great way to share your own scholarship and work out to other people. Uh, but Michael, I'll connect you with um, Jamie Holmes at TCC, and she'll she'll get you set up. Um, in a lot of cases, I'm going to share my screen and share the OCO press page. Um, with these grants, if you're creating. Um, there's an OCO Pressbooks account uh, that you can create in, and this is built on WordPress, and that's a whole other session. Uh, but it's a it's a wonderful. Let me drop this link in and the chat if I can find the chat again. And um, so, if you're curious, poke around there and see what kind of examples there are of, of the great work that's been done there. Um, we also at Oklahoma State try to share our stuff out to uh, OER Commons. And we also put it a lot of other places, which is great because then it gets picked up and used by other universities uh, and other faculty member. And we just get to infect the whole world with the brilliance of Oklahoma. So we're at 1122. Uh, what questions do you have? Oh, we lost Brad, rats, but we still have Tracy. So if you want uh, additional high level clarification, you've got a chance here to, to get it from us or even better from Tracy. I'll be quiet for a minute. So if you have any questions, you can turn your mic or you can post them into the chat window. Uh, we are kind of running low on time here since our next session start at 1130. Um, but if you do have any questions, this is a great opportunity for it. I will recommend grabbing some of those links before you leave the room. Um, you can always reach out to Ka Kathy or Christina um, after the session today if you need any of those again, but they did provide a lot of great resources in that chat window. So if you haven't taken a look, go I'll just do a quick copy paste and you've got all of their resources. Um, looks like we do, uh, we are getting some of their contact information there as well. So if you want to email them, you can go there or you can always look up their contact information through the speakers panel in Zoom. I have not seen any questions come through, so I think we are probably good for today. Thank you, Kathy and Christina. Uh, we appreciate your time and your expertise and all the information that you've shared. Um, I appreciate all of you attending today um, and we'll go ahead and officially close out this session and you can go back to the lobby or the sessions list to find your next uh, meeting to join. So thank you again, 